I'm Neil Wald, I'm a professor in the Department of Theater and Dance. Welcome. Um, I'm just here to get the show started because this show really belongs to the dancers and they've had a very action-packed day so far. But the students that are here on the stage right now are the dance attorneys. Oh, you already know who they are. Um, and we have a workshop that Christy's going to tell you about. But um, I think that we should get right to it because we've got a full program for you. So let's start the show. Hi, dancers. Welcome Hi. to Dance Day. We're so excited to have you here. We absolutely love performing for you guys, so welcome. Um, as Neil said, my name is Christy, and I am a senior BFA dance major. And I'm going to inform you a little bit about what we do in Dance Liturgy. The Dance Liturgy Workshop is a writing seminar where a selected group of dancers join together to explore how we can conceptualize what we physicalize and examine our process of dance. As danceaturgs, we challenge ourselves to probe the choreographic mind, history, and process to deepen our understanding of our craft. The danceaturg is the performer as spectator. We meet every Friday morning at 8.30 where we consider many different questions about the dancer's mind, body, and spirit. Over healthy breakfast snacks that our Professor Neil provides for us, we analyze the whys of what we do. From our artistic perspective, we conduct historical <coughs> research on each season's repertory, we advocate for more awareness of our craft, we seek objectivity and clarity in the process of presenting critique of the work of the traditional and modern choreographers, as well as the devised choreography of our peers in an atmosphere of intellectual give and take. Our goal as danceaturgs is to push ourselves to test the boundaries of dance and to re-experience our own dancing from different points of view. Now I'm going to introduce you to Daniel, and you'll hear from everyone about the works that you're going to see today. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel, and I'm also a senior uh, here at MSU, and I'm a BA major. Um, BA dance major, as I said. And I'm going to be introducing uh, Mad Rush by Larry Kegwin. Mad Rush by Larry Kegwin is an originally choreographed work that was premiered here at Montclair State University last November 2016. Kegwin wanted to create a work that was physicalized the concept of spiraling emotions and how individual people can stand within their own truths. The title was named after the song Mad Rush by Philip Glass which is the score that is used for this particular piece. Each performer showcases movements that have individual purpose and experience this rushing of energies and emotions throughout the piece. Costuming the dancers in variations of white pedestrian clothing symbolizes a purity and light that they all come to accept. The large ensemble sections of the dance represent a communal aspect of the work and slowly peels away several layers of humanity by exiting dancers one by one. Mad Rush showcases his aesthetic by utilizing music visualization and showing clear choices through his choreographic tools. For instance, starting and ending the piece in the same way creates a summative approach to the way Kegwin wants to convey the work conceptually. This choreographic process was very different from most um, choreographers. He had the cast workshop in ways of developing different movement through various techniques he would suggest, such as creating a movement phrase that physically and visually spelled out our own names. After days of gathering material, Kegwin would then copy, cut, and paste the work to ultimately create Mad Rush. So when you're watching this piece, watch out for the different names that the dancers spell out through their movement. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Melissa Rosica and I'm a junior BFA dance major here at Montclair. Mark Morris choreographed Polka, which premiered in 1992. This piece has a cast of 14 women and is performed with live accompaniment. Polka is focused around strong dynamic movements that require a lot of musicality. The choreography almost directly reflects the musical phrasing. Most of this piece is centered around a perfectly symmetrical circle, which can be hard to obtain. In saying this, the rehearsal process was strict, specific, yet rewarding at the same time. It took a lot of work to perfect the specific movements and ensure that each dancer was in sync. I feel a strong sense of community with my fellow dancers while performing this work. 
Some critics have said that polka is a tribal celebration danced around a metaphorical campfire. This is prominent when we are all facing inward with our hair down, arms extended, and brushing our foot against our knee multiple times. This piece takes a lot of focus, concentration, and when done well, is aesthetically pleasing. Look out for the moment when we first break from our circle to create a running spiral. It is truly mesmerizing. Hi everyone, I'm Miss Marty, Melody Marty. <laughs> and I am a dance BA major, a senior here at Montclair State. And this is... I'm Christina Hall and I'm also a senior um, BFA dance major here at Montclair. And we are proud to present Nancy Lushington's point piece, American Baroque, in its premiere during the 2017 DanceWorks concert. This piece is an abstract piece of work that carries a clear sense of poise and character just as much as a literal piece with a storyline would. The score of the piece is from the Shock of the Old album, Common Sense, Composers, Collective, and American Baroque, and is composed by Mark Mellitz. Lushington's inspiration for the piece was influenced by the music and title of this album. The haunting sounds of the score made her skin crawl and motivated her to evoke this feeling upon the dancers and the audience. The, com the music complements Lushington's vision of the piece, which is a mashup of Baroque and American cultures the collide of two very different worlds. American Baroque consists of 13 girls dressed in beautifully elaborated black and gold costumes all in point. The clean cut and color of the black bitard underneath the angular golden skirt and embellished top mixes the fancy European world with the simplistic American world. Lushington aims to evoke a creepy feeling with the mingling styles of the two cultures and time periods. The piece gives viewers a glimpse of the past and the present, and as Lushington stated, exaggerates delicate and gestural movements in the piece that is very much the opposite of her powerful and athletic movement. The piece plays with going on and off balance as well. Be sure to look out for these movement qualities in the piece and how they merge into one. American Baroque is like a fantasy. One moment the dancers are posing as a silhouette from a distant past, the next they are in constant motion in the present. Uh, what's up everybody, my name is Eric Para and I'm a BFA dance major here and I'm gonna be talking about Journey. An army of fierce men fill up the stage in Earl Mosley's latest draft of Journey. The dance takes the audience through an emotional and physical adventure that leaves the audience with a sense of completion. The piece has been choreographed and restructured countless times and has finally made its way to an MSU stage. As all Earl Mosley pieces, Journey has continued to evolve choreographically even throughout the last couple of weeks leading up to this show. He feels it is his duty as a choreographer to keep his pieces fresh and evolving. It's a dance inspired by the many events life takes us through and serves as a culmination to Mosley's work as a choreographer. The music is hard-hitting, dynamic, and rhythmic. The costumes provoke mascul masculinity, match the layering of the music, and intensify the constant change of direction and level. The dance continuously challenges the performer's stamina, musicality, and technique. Altogether, the strong but gentle, loud but sensitive piece allows for self-reflection and ensemble togetherness. Be sure to look for these opposing dynamics as the MSU dance boys leave it all on stage. Hi, I'm Jackie Kossoff. I'm a senior dance major, um, and I'm going to talk to you about Christian Von Howard's To the Teeth, which premiered here at Montclair State University in November 2016. Five distinct figures illuminate the stage and enter the space no longer as themselves. This quintet of female dancers embody the persona of a witch's coven, each with a unique role in the cult. Mystical elements of darkness serve as inspiration for the syncopated, breathy music by Caroline Shaw and Rain, eerie lighting, and intense interactions between the dancers. The strength of the sorcery is exemplified by the powerful women who dance and fill the stage with their energies as they are completely covered in skin tone mesh with distinct black patterns and floor length black skirts. Enamored by the mysticism that leaves people questioning if there's truth in magic, 
Von Howard found movies of witches' rituals that influenced movement ideas and the use of lighting. Look out for the physical and emotional connections between the dancers as we hope you enjoy the magic of To the Teeth. Hi everyone, my name is Stacey Ricciatelli and I'm also a BFA senior um, here at MSU. Uh, new Second Line, choreographed by Camille A. Brown in 2006, is, about, is a piece about coming together as a community to celebrate the loss of someone or something in one's life. Behind the New Orleans jazz music, the piece is based on New Orleans' Second Line. Second Line is the back half of a funeral parade. In the front, you have all the family members. In the back of the parade is people celebrating a life well lived. The first day of rehearsal, we are told to think of someone or something that we have lost and write a letter about them. We did not share these letters, but when we were dancing the piece, we had to think about that person. We were on the phone with Camille one day during rehearsal, and she was saying that we should bring our letters to life through the movement and through the energy of each other. To share, um, to let our stories come to life. We had to think of a social dance that would help help our stories. Even though the piece is very tiring, we use these social dances and finding connections with each other to help, to really help bring these stories to life. Each dancer has their own individual stories throughout the work. By the way, they each have their own social dances and interpret the movement differently to bring their stories to the piece. See how many different uh, social dances you can find during the piece, and also find the celebration with one person or a group of people. I hope you enjoy New Second Line by Camille A. Brown. So we have a little time before the curtain goes up. And I hope somebody out there has a question for any of our dancers before the show starts. Who's going to be great? I know there's some brave people out there. <laughs> right? What about the people who cheered for, for Miss Martin? <laughs> oh, so, so can one of her young protégés ask her a question for the rest of us? <laughs> Are you excited to dance? Ooh. very excited to dance. Um, I'm always excited to dance. I think everybody here is too, right guys? Even the thing about being excited, um, during show week it's hard because the energy, it's a lot to deal with physically, mentally, emotionally, but uh, we find a way to pull through it, especially if it's your passion. Uh, everybody sitting up here has a passion to dance and it's really just finding that little motivation to keep you going. And I think um, we're very tired, but we are excited. We are. How long did it take to prepare for this concert? Um, so uh, a lot of these pieces we actually performed in our fall performance in November, um, <clears throat> but a lot of them, um, we, we continued rehearsing throughout this semester as well. Um, some of the choreography changed, but we took the chance to go deeper into the choreography and make this performance even stronger. But um, the point piece that Melody and Christina were talking about is uh, new this semester. Um, and like I said, a lot of the pieces have changes as well. So it's taken a majority of the school year. That's a really, really good question. Um, I think as a high school student and even um, younger, you know, I, I did dance at a separate studio because at my school, we had no type of um, arts programs at all. 
um, and we were a really small school, so we didn't really have an opportunity to express ourselves artistically um, and creatively. So um, my only chance to do that was at a local studio, and I really didn't um, have the opportunity to really push myself as much as I wanted to, and so I really got to college in, in this environment. Um, so I think as someone, if I were to go back in time, I would have definitely wanted to push myself artistically, creatively, um, and be more open to, um, to dancing and, and wanting to um, be um, a little bit more professional at a younger age, right? So I think it is that, that opportunity of um, really pushing yourself and really going beyond just you know, your, your normal, everyday routine, right? It's, it's you know, taking that extra time, like I'm gonna go to class a little earlier and, and warm up, you know, do uh, stretch even longer, doing things like that would really, I think would have benefited me a little earlier in the game, but um, that's definitely something I would have thought about. Um, so my story is a lot different from Danny's because I didn't really start getting real dance training until I arrived at MSU. Um, so I kind of made a very late decision in my life to start dancing. So um, I think if I had the opportunity to go back and do more, uh, like Danny said, I think I kind of would have just put more time and thought into um, different things that I'm doing, maybe more research. You know, if this is something that you really want to do, you want to make sure that you're familiar with it as much as you can, not only with uh, dancing, but like with the history of it, um, different types of dancing, what, um, what dancing is fit for you, because maybe a dancing, the dance that is offered at a university isn't something that you want to go into, but there's so many other choices that you can do within the world of dance, because it's just like endless, you know what I mean? So um, I think just definitely getting to know your craft and know what, not only what you're good at, but what you want to get good at, because I think those can be two different things. Um, but yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so for the dance minor, you're not taking as many credits as you would be as a dance major. As a dance major, uh, you're taking two technique classes a semester, you're taking a, co a composition class, which is like improv or choreography, um, so, and you're performing um, at, on stage with like these shows. So um, as a minor, you don't um, really get that many uh, performance opportunities. Uh, you don't have to fulfill as many credits. There's a certain quota that you have to fulfill so they get distributed differently as they would if you're a dance major. So um, it's definitely way more time involved as a dance major. Uh, it's a lot more dedication and just, I think you just have to be here a, a lot more as a dance minor. It's kind of more something that's just like, you know, on the side when you have more time to take these credits than you take them. But when you're a dance major, most of your day is filled with dance major courses and you're maybe only taking one or two general classes whereas if you're a dance minor it's probably the other way around you have another major so that means that you're taking most of your credits for that specific major and then on when you find time or you work your schedule around finding a space to add those one or two dance classes a semester prepared. Um, I know there's so many avenues and so many different directions you can go once you leave here, but I feel like I have a very solid base of training, not only in my technique, but I feel like artistically I'm now at a place where I understand myself and understand where I want to go. And even if I don't know where I want to go, I feel confident that I can take that step and put myself out there. So I definitely feel like here we've made this community. I've you know, found myself as an individual, as an artist, and now I feel like I'm ready to go on to the next step, even though I'm sad that I'm leaving. I think we can do one more, and then we have to start. Um, 
Um, I don't think there was anything. I mean, I've grown up dancing. I've danced ever since I was little. Um, what keeps us going every day? I think it's our passion and love for it. Also, the people around us as well. Um, but yeah, like getting up for 8.30, 10 o'clock ballet every single day isn't the most easy thing in the world, but when you have a passion and a dedication for it and you want to get better, um, it just makes everything worth it. Let's have a round of applause for our <laughs>